Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, a little bit after 8 o'clock on a Saturday evening. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. I think I just said that, but okay, well, just make it certain you heard me on that one. As of right now, again, fairly quiet conditions, a little bit on the foggy side in the Mid-South as we go into the rest of the evening, so we could see, again, some possible delays as we get up and going for Sunday morning, but drier air is going to be on the way toward the Mid-South as we get into tomorrow and for the next couple of days as well. We'll take a look at what we're going to be seeing in the way of weekend ending forecast updates for you coming up here in just a little bit. Plus, the last week of January is upon us, and things, again, not doing too bad for the Mid-South for right now, but the potential for some winter weather is still out there as we go into the next several days. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you are just joining us, glad to have you along for the ride. Drop your location and any weather reports that you've got for the area. Give us some cloud cover. Give us some temperatures out there. For those of you who have rain gauges, would love to know how much rain you picked up for today. We did about two-thirds of of an inch in the Memphis metro area officially today. Several other areas got close to around one inch of rainfall. Actually, a couple got over one inch of rain, as I see on WeatherNet 3. We'll show you that coming up here in just a little while. Your complete forecast, again, into the rest of the evening is going to be relatively quiet. You're still going to need the windshield wipers for the early evening hours, but then finally starting to clear out as we get into around the early portions of Sunday morning. But more on that coming up here in just a little while. Forecast in a nutshell, again, if you've never seen our video blog before, all you have to do is look at the blue bar at the bottom of the screen, scrolling along here, information about the forecast or what we've got going on again throughout the rest of the evening. Temperatures will be knocking off by just a little bit. Could be back in the mid-40s in some areas by the time we hit around midnight. And possibility of drizzle out there, <coughs> excuse me, will be leaving the area and as we get into the overnight period, chances of rain basically gone from the rest of the Mid-South, so pretty quiet out across much of the area. Annette Wilson, West Memphis, Arkansas, welcome to the show. Marie Brent, no location, but welcome. Thank you very much. Toon, Audrey Rogers, thank you very much. Charlotte Turner from Cordova, Foggy in Pontotoc, Mike Edwards, thank you very much. Selmer, Tennessee, Stacy Doughty, welcome to the show, and welcome to everybody else who's joining us, Rhonda Cruz, Rhonda Crow's Crow Prather, sorry, two-point typeface and bifocals don't really work all that well at this time. And Ashley Nicole from the, from Cordova, welcome to the show for this evening. Got a lot of problems with fog out there, a lot of moisture, cool temperatures, and again, some very light winds. That's all a very good recipe for fog, and that's exactly what we have across the Mid-South at this time, with visibilities near zero across much of the area as we go into the 8 o'clock hour of Saturday night. Again, if you're just joining us, welcome to the show. Give us a weather report in the comments section. Give us a temperature if you got it, wind speed, direction. Uh, if you've got a rain gauge out there, we'd love to see how much rainfall you picked up in the last 24 hours. So just give us some reports out there from the Mid-South. We'd love to see some amateur meteorology going on and put those into the comments section for tonight. Thanks to everybody for joining us on a fairly foggy Saturday night across much of the Mid-South. We'll talk more about the current conditions out there for fog in next about couple of minutes, so stay tuned for that. Crosby Hall Construction Cam, the lights of Vaught-Hemingway Stadium lighting up Oxford for tonight and also seeing again the Student Union lit up. Looks like the construction is going along pretty well from around the area of Ole Miss. A little bit on the drizzly side, as you can see, the rain on the camera lens from in and around North Mississippi as well. Germantown from Poplar Pike, Germantown Parkway, the lights of the towers of Poplar and Mendenhall, and the water towers north of Germantown High School. Decently foggy, lots of traffic around the area, probably a train going through in that location. And temperatures well above freezing, mid-50s at this time, and picking up about two-thirds of an inch. Same thing that we got in and around the Memphis metro area for today. So again, not doing too bad. Steam fog off the Mississippi River. The air above is a little bit on the cooler side, allowing the uh, warm water to kind of condensate the moisture right there. So kind of this nice little soup of fog in the Mississippi Valley right on through the area. Big River Crossing lit up quite nicely for tonight and animated. Haven't seen it uh, do the light show here for quite some time. Lights of West Memphis, Arkansas off in the distance, so a nice view from downtown Memphis as we see the fog roll on through the valleys from the area for tonight. Penny Carter Garrison, Olive Branch, 64 degrees, or 54 degrees. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Tam, see, Timmy, show me a young basin. Hope I'm saying that right. I can stay in fog. It's that rain that was annoying. Well, it was getting rid of the rainfall and the fog coming up a little bit later on. Foggy in Oakfield, Leslie Sayer Rogers. Thank you very much. 
Joyce Johnson Berry, 54.5 degrees. Now that's an accurate temperature right there. Foggy, three quarters of an inch of rain. Crenshaw, Mississippi, thank you very much for that. Kenneth Sims, how foggy is it going to get? My wife does a paper route after midnight. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Marley, Marie C. Brent, going to be sunny. We'll talk about that as well coming up here in just a little while. I-240 and Poplar, the westbound lanes here, eastbound lanes, again, a little bit of fog around that particular area. Back toward Park Avenue and the Quince Avenue overpass. Again, a little bit of fog hanging around this intersection for right now. And some speckles of rain on the lens for the time being. Delays for tonight if you're catching a late flight or know somebody who's heading this direction. Again, fog being reported around Memphis International Airport. The view from I-240 and Airways tonight. North winds at about 7 miles per hour. No delays to report here. Likewise, looking at good travel across the continental United States. So no big problems being seen around the Mid-South area. 54 degrees. Marie C. Brent, thank you very much uh, for that one. Christy Ruckus, snow, say it ain't so well can't say that just yet, but it is trending a little bit closer that direction. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Jennifer Riley, 53 degrees in Ashland, Mississippi. Thank you very much. One request for snow from Gail Lemons Quinn. Thank you very much on that one. And a vote for no for snow for Terry Miller from High Lake. No snow, please. Well, we'll see what we can do about that. Stay tuned for the extended forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Storm Tracker 3S, outside of just some drizzle drifting on through the area, this is the metro that you're seeing right in here, Mississippi River on this side, the Tennessee-Mississippi state line down here, I-40 and the loop area through here, Millington back on up to around Tipton and Lauderdale counties north of the metro area here, and I-55 in eastern Arkansas on this side of the screen. So again, a few drizzles drifting on through giving us, again, some wet windshields and, unfortunately, some wet roadways, so that could be a bit of a problem into the overnight hours. Heaviest activity by far is well to the east of the Mississippi River and continuing to move away from the Mid-South. So the heaviest stuff in the Tennessee River, well to the east of Jackson, continuing into Middle Tennessee and also into northern parts of Mississippi from Holly Springs, Oxford, I-55, around Coldwater and down toward around Como, north of Batesville, all the way back over to around the Tennessee River. That's the heaviest activity. West of the Mississippi, outside of a few sprinkles and drizzles, we don't really have too much of anything else into and around the area to talk about. And it looks like that dry air we talked about this morning on daybreak is on its way. It's just taking a little while longer to get here. Notice that there's hardly anything in the way of rainfall north of I-40 at this time for much of the rest of the Mid-South. So the rainfall that we're seeing down to our south is going to continue to drift over toward the east of us. And that should not lead too much of anything else in the way of problems for the Mid-South area. Notice again the drier air. You can see the leading edge of that dry air right there dropping on through the area back down to close to I-40. So the dry air is starting to take over. It's just going to take a little while longer to get the whole thing through here for later on tonight. So something, again, to hopefully consider for the evening hours for right now. Uh, Connie Westbrooks Brown, please no snow, sun and sun. Okay, that's one vote, no for snow. Teresa Overturf, I want a lot of snow. Okay, well, so we're going to be battling back and forth on that where it comes to votes for or against for snow out there for right now. We'll take a look at that snow forecast in just a little bit. Uh, Kenneth Sims for overnight, depending on your location, as I recall, you're up around the Dyersburg area, somewhere in there. Again, Storm Tracker 3S giving you updates on the advisories out there. Dense fog advisory, this was issued just about an hour ago by the National Weather Service. Metro area, West Tennessee, Northwest Mississippi, and all of eastern counties in Arkansas under this dense fog advisory until tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Visibility could be around zero in many, and is in fact, around zero in many locations. We'll take a look at the numbers of what we expect coming up here within the course of the next uh, couple of minutes, so stay tuned for that. Live real-time WeatherNet 3, just over an inch of rainfall around Kaywood School in Lexington, lower to mid-50s out there, so a decent, nice, soaking rainfall. Nothing seen in the way of flash flooding, severe weather, anything like that going on, but did slow the roadways down by just a little bit, so again, if you had any problems getting through out there, 
A little bit of problems with the rainfall for today on the roads, but hopefully should not be that much of a problem overnight. Speaking of which, into around News Channel 3 at 10, lingering showers are going to be heading on over, grudgingly making their way out of the area as we go toward News Channel 3 daybreak tomorrow morning. By the time we hit around CBS Sunday morning and face the nation, we should be looking at the rainfall east of the Mississippi River into northern and western parts of Alabama, leaving the Mid-South. If we're lucky and these areas of clouds erode from that dry air coming on through that you see through here. Gray colors indicates again where the cloud cover is. Green indicates the chances of rainfall and clearing skies coming back in from the northwest. So that should hopefully, maybe, for some of us, give us a decent sunrise tomorrow morning. But we'll see how long these clouds linger across the area into tomorrow. By tomorrow afternoon, temperatures back in the mid to upper 50s, about where they were today, maybe a little bit cooler. The really strong force of the cold air has not made it through the area just yet. It's going to be a brisk start to the week. Temperatures by the time we hit the bus stop early Monday morning back in the 30s and could be the possibility some rain and snow passing well to our north. That's not our next storm system coming on through. That will affect areas north of us. What we see for the potential of winter weather is... Right now, again, looking a little better, kind of, sort of, not entirely all that much, but kind of anyway. What we're looking for as we go into around Thursday night, Friday morning, the potential for, again, anything involving the snow showers out there. Let me rewind this for just a second and set this back up again, because unfortunately the timing is off on this for the pauses. Now, as we get into around, again, Thursday or Friday morning, that possibility of snow makes its way on through and then leaves the area pretty much done by the time we get to around anything involving daybreak on Friday. So Thursday night, north of us, some of that starts to drift into the area as we go toward again around Thursday night, Friday morning. So right now, according to this computer model, one of about a baker's dozen that we use to help you understand what's going on with the weather, where our forecasts come from, from northeast Arkansas, extreme northeastern Arkansas, southeast Missouri, northwest Tennessee, that appears to be the best target zone right now for anything involving the possibility of snowfall coming down and this is going to be on the southern fringe of anything that falls well back to our north. Now for the rest of the area from just early this morning we overlaid the possibility of sleet and freezing rain on this and there were a couple of target zones earlier on from roughly about the area here northwestern parts of the viewing area and then another one back to about say middle Tennessee. As of right now, we've got the ice and the possibility of sleet overlaid on this display, and it's not showing up. So, again, things have changed once again as we go into the last couple of days. We've seen fluctuations back and forth. We're going to continue to see those over the next several days. So the chances of snow a little bit better, dropping a little farther into the Mid-South. But once again, we're on that southern fringe right there between the rain and the snowfall and that mixture zone right there. It doesn't look all that good for the potential of anything involving sleet or snow mixed together with freezing rain out there. So that mixture possibility for right now, again about six days out, does not look all that good. But the snowfall potential looks a little bit better as we get into around Thursday night, Friday morning. And again, if you're around, say, upwards of the Boot Hill, northeast Arkansas, southern Missouri, Dyersburg, Jackson, into around Gibson County, north of, say, Crockett County, Haywood County. Possibility of seeing more potential of snowfall there. But again, as of right now, this is going to, I'm not going to put much stock in this map for right now. The potential is there, yes, but over the next several days, whether this goes north and we don't get anything or goes farther south and we get a lot more is going to change. It's going to be definitely something interesting to keep up to date with. Now, for those of you out there who are saying, well, why can't you just nail it down? You're a forecaster. You've got the information. Just tell us what we're going to get about a week in advance. Well, here's the thing. We can't do that. We'd love to be able to do that, but these are the most accurate models we've got out there. And remember that you live on this spinning terrarium in space where the winds are whipping all around there, getting co cooled off in one place and heated up in another. These things change. These forecasts change because you're on 
part of that spinning ball and those winds can change the, the forecast around very, very easily. So if you, and here's another thing, just for a suggestion, if you've never tried winter weather forecasting before, I highly urge you to give it a shot. And if you do so, please let me know what you come up with in your location and when it comes to winter weather precipitation forecasting for right now. I'd love to see your predictions about what you think we're going to get. And we'll call them back up again as this next storm system gets on through the area. But personally speaking, winter weather forecasting is one of my least favorite times of the year to forecast for because there are all kinds of fluctuations and just one little burst of warm air at the wrong level can mess up an entire forecast for an entire region. And that's happened before. I've studied that back at the University of Kansas as part of one of my uh, senior projects. So this is something to really take a look at. And again, it will change over the next several days. So please keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more on that. And if you have predictions about it, hey, let them fly. Let's take a look and see what you got out there using the models or just if you want to use your intuition or the dice throwing to say that that's more accurate, Okay, that's great. We'll match it up against what we come up with as we go throughout the next several days. Here's what we're looking at for fog by tomorrow morning. Again, visibility could be pretty ugly out there for the morning, so you may want to allow a little bit of extra time into around for traveling for church, Sunday school, or wherever else you may be going at this point in time. Uh, Jennifer Harris Lewis, Carroll County, yes, is included in that dense fog advisory uh, for right now, at least from what it looks like at this time. See Patricia Hudson, no ice, please. Buttercups are coming up already. Wow, early spring in some parts of the Mid South area. Uh, good evening, Kathy Wagner. Thanks for joining us from Dyer County. Don't get anything on Friday. Well, we'll see if that is going to be the case over the course of the next couple of days. So again, this is where we're going to be seeing the possibility of that coming up a little bit later on. Now, running the numbers again for the forecast should be a decently mild day tomorrow, just above normal with plenty of sunshine out there during the rest of the day. A lot of clouds will be sticking around throughout News Channel 3 daybreak and into possibly around lunchtime, especially east of the Mississippi River. A little cooler, a little drier on Monday back in the upper 40s. Even cooler coming up on Tuesday with lots of sunshine, no question about that, but a bit on the brisk side as temperatures remain back in the lower 40s. Heading out of January and into February, starting on Thursday, mid-50s, just a bit above normal for this time of the year. Now again, late Thursday afternoon, evening, more clouds. Late into Thursday night, more chances of rainfall. So we've kept the rainfall chances out of this icon here. It's going to be late Thursday into Friday. And then the cold air arrives, possibly changing over some of that moisture to a rain-sleet-snow mixture. So early on furry fake forecaster day, or groundhog day as some of you may call it, it's going to be back in the upper 30s for highs. So if we get enough temperatures in here to get something changed over to a little bit of rain, sleet, snow mixture, I don't think it's going to last that long because we'll be going upwards on the temperatures. Not too far, but far enough to get everything melted out there. Now, for those of you who are looking for a true American holiday involving weather and science, forget about this one coming up on Friday. Next Monday, not this Monday, but fr uh, Monday, February 5th, is National Weather Person's Day. Just putting it out there, not asking for anything. Don't want to do that, but if you want to send a celebratory tweet or something of that nature, please do so. Talking up weather for all of my forecast friends here at News Channel 3 in the weather uh, Severe Weather Center and everybody else out there from the National Weather Service to private forecasting firms to research meteorologists to military meteorologists. Everybody out there does a great job in forecasting the weather and promoting science, and that's one of the best things you can possibly do these days. So again, if you like to know more, I'll have more about this holiday, this true American holiday for weather people coming up a little bit later on. This one, it's, you know, it's a lot of fluff, literally, pretty much, and not much in the way of science out there. Thanks to everybody for some great pictures and also some great information out there. Talking about the Skywarn classes, D Sager 001 saying, having attended this training, I highly recommend it for everyone. You don't have to become an active spotter. What you learn is valuable for personal use, which is very true. If you don't want to be a spotter, you don't have to, but if you want to learn what goes on with severe weather, 
you can do that with these classes taught by the National Weather Service. To get that information, when the next meetings are going to be, go to this website, wreg.com slash weather. Drop down below the forecast, and you'll see the first four meetings taking place that will let you know what's going on. Louis Haskett giving us a nice sunny view of northeast Arkansas and construction on I-555. A little bit of some closed roadways there, at least down to one lane anyway. And James R. Gulledge from Humboldt, Tennessee. Nice view of some sunshine as we closed out the week. So a beautiful end of the week, not exactly a dry start to the weekend, unfortunately. If you've got pictures around the Mid-South or wherever you're coming in from tonight that you'd like to be able to share along with us, that's great. Please post them to me, Aonic underscore WREG3 on Twitter, Aonic no underscore necessary, WREG3 on Instagram, and my own Facebook page, Austinonic WREG. Great to have you along for the ride tonight, but if you want to get your pictures out there so everybody can see them, please send them along to me. We'd love to see them, and I try to file through as many of them as I possibly can to let you know a little bit more about what's going on out there. My forecast on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 throughout the rest of the weekend. And of course, I'll have more tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Kristen Holloway here with the news. Mike Sadie has all the day's sports and yours truly with weather. And of course, we'll have more coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak that starts at 6 a.m. Sunday morning. So stay tuned for more there. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks to everybody for joining us tonight. Thanks to everybody for the weather comments in the section, uh, comment section down below. Thank you very much for uh, getting all those weather comments in there about uh, temperatures and clouds and fog and everything else like that. So thank you very much for that. And we'll have more coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Thanks for stopping by for News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime.